I just learned about cryptocurrency. Welcome back. Uh, let's talk some crypto. If you're in crypto and you're not practicing self-custody, then you're not doing it right. But what's a hardware wallet? Most people still hold their Bitcoin on exchanges. It's such a bad idea. Come to hardware wallets. Come to self-custody. It's important that you be able to self-custody Bitcoin. Welcome back to our series, Trezor 101, designed to get you up and running on the foundations of hardware wallets and cryptocurrency. But why should you care? What is a hardware wallet? Why does it matter? How does it work? A hardware wallet is an electronic device that stores the private key to your cryptocurrency wallet. In our case, Trezor devices are designed to work with our app, Trezor Suite, allowing you to interact with coins held on the blockchain. If you watched our first 101 video, What is Cryptocurrency? You'll recall that anyone with a private key can access the wallet it belongs to, along with the crypto associated with it on the blockchain. Obviously, that means it needs to be kept safe. Anyone who has or somehow finds the private key to a wallet has unrestricted access to the funds associated with it. So when you buy crypto on an exchange, who gets control of the private key? It isn't you. When you set up an account on a crypto exchange, what's actually happening behind the scenes is that they're creating a record in their database saying your profile is associated with a certain amount of money. It might look like you own the crypto on the account, but in reality, you don't have the private keys associated with it. The exchange does. The exchange is the party that ultimately gets to decide whether or not your crypto can be sent somewhere or not. This means you don't actually have direct access to what you've purchased, the actual coins that are on the blockchain. The exchange is the true owner. They decide whether or not the funds are held, sent, or received. They control your money. This is a major potential problem for more than one reason. But the one we'll highlight for now is that this means that there's a device, or set of devices, physical objects somewhere in the world, holding the information that can access people's crypto. That's not to say exchanges don't practice good security. Most of them do. Not all details are publicly available, but we know that, ironically, many of them use hardware wallets such as ours. But that doesn't mean they aren't vulnerable to the ever-evolving methods and tricks being employed by malicious actors. In 2014, the infamous Mt. Gox hack set a record at $450 million in Bitcoin lost. That's worth over $36 billion at the time of this video. They've been storing private keys online, which hackers found, and then used to drain the wallets they belong to. In 2025, the victim was Bybit and a new record was set at $1.5 billion lost. In this case, the hackers manipulated the computer screens of Bybit themselves, making them think they were sending funds to company wallets, when in actuality, they were going to the hackers. And none of this is even touching on the smaller attacks that took place in the 10 years between. The point is, you can never be 100% sure your funds are safe if the private key for them is being kept by someone else. Enter hardware wallets. Shortly after Bitcoin's creation, the space was primarily occupied by programmers and other tech-savvy individuals. Trezor's founders wanted a way for less tech-centric people to get involved and be able to hold Bitcoin for themselves. Security was a major factor too, because in those days, most people would leave their private keys on their computer, leading to hacks and lost funds. So in addition to the goal of security, Trezor was created to allow anyone with Bitcoin to self-custody. The term self-custody meaning you hold Bitcoin yourself, ideally in a secure environment. If you're in crypto and you're not practicing self-custody, then you're not doing it right. So how do hardware wallets protect you better than an exchange? The biggest difference is that hardware wallets keep your keys in your control and offline. When you create a new wallet using a Trezor device, your keys are generated on the device itself and never sent off of it. Not only is the private key generated entirely offline without ever touching the internet, once it's been shown to you during setup, it's never shown again. Okay, wait, wait, wait. A hardware wallet creates a private key, but only shows it to you once? What's the point of that? The point is, you take the private keys offline yourself. A literal safe inside a picture frame. Magnet underneath your desk. Just make sure it's someone nowhere to find it. Hardware wallets are designed and intended to be a blend of digital and physical. So the digital part comes in the form of being able to access your crypto with a device. Even though the device won't show you your private key ever again, it still contains the information inside and can keep being used to access crypto on the blockchain. But what if something happens to your device? That's where the physical part comes in. By writing down or otherwise storing your private key offline, you're able to access the coins held on the blockchain by entering the private key into a new device. You can technically do this infinitely on as many devices as you like. When you set up a hardware wallet for the first time, the whole point of the process is so that your holdings become untouchable. No hacker can find your private key on a computer because it's never sent to one, and no one can find it on the device because it never connects to the internet. 
By the way, you may have noticed I've been showing a set of words each time I say private key. That's because when we invented hardware wallets in 2014, we also invented a new standard for translating the private key from a huge string of characters into a set of words to make it more readable. That way, if anything happens to the hardware device, you don't have to enter all those characters, aka your private key, to get access to your funds again. All you have to do is enter the words and the device knows to translate them into the correct characters, which will unlock your wallet. Another thing to note is that even though I've been referring to this as a private key the entire time, in general, we just refer to it as a wallet backup. And that's because strictly speaking, a private key is tied to a single cryptocurrency, whereas our wallet backup gives access to all the cryptocurrencies associated with your device. So to sum up everything we've talked about, as well as a few bonuses, here are the bullet points on what makes hardware wallets superior. They keep control in your hands. No company, institution, or outside authority can touch what's yours. They allow for much better privacy. The arguments for financial privacy are broad and diverse. We can't list them all here, but it's a great thing to educate yourself on. They take the target off your back. If you have a hardware wallet, you won't be affected if an exchange gets hacked. Improved overall security. Once you begin delving into the world of hardware wallets and crypto, it won't be long before you start recognizing the advantages the technology has to offer you. We have many other videos touching on the biggest questions you might have after watching this one. So take the time to check some of those out, and we'll see you in the next 101.